Hey everyone, welcome back to Education is Life, your go-to channel for unlocking the wonders of learning. It is me, Joe Edgo, and today we're doing something a little different. We're jumping into the world of smart homes and STEM education. But I won't be alone. Joining me in today's lesson is my awesome 13-year-old daughter, Liana Zewell. Hi everyone! I'm excited to be here and to learn with you, Dad. Thanks for joining, Beb. Now, the reason why you're here is because we have this smart home learning kit from AceBot. And this kit promises to teach young learners like you about electronics, programming, and building a miniature smart home, all while having fun. But can it deliver on that promise? Well, that's why you're here to share with us your experiences and opinions about this product. Wow! Okay, before I tell you my verdict about this AceBot smart home, can we please tell them first how we should unbox and assemble this kit? Sure, go ahead. So, yesterday, we opened this package, and inside it is the AceBot Smart Home Learning Kit. Hey, there are a bunch of components that I really don't know. It feels like I will be working on a real grown-up engineering project, except for these wooden boards that we are probably going to use for building the mini smart home. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. This kit comes with a lot of electronic components commonly used by engineering students and hobbyists for their projects. But don't worry, I will teach you all these components as we assemble the kit and then see if you learn. But first, let's check what we have here. Alright. So, here is what you called an ESP32 controller board. Okay, so what's that? Well, think of it as the brain of your smart home. Similar to your laptop and smartphone, they both have what we call a central processing unit or CPU. You just learned that word microprocessor in your ICT subject, right? Ah, uh, yes. Last second quarter. Now, the main difference between this ESP32 from your smartphone and your laptop's microprocessor is that this is called a microcontroller. It also contains a microprocessor, which is a part of this ESP32 microchip that's inside this metallic module. Of course, your laptop and your smartphone's processor are way faster and more powerful compared to this. That's why they are more expensive. However, microcontrollers like this are designed to operate at a lower speed because they are not intended to be used for intensive applications like your computer games, audio and video editing, and other applications you commonly use on your laptop. They are designed for embedded systems and Internet of Things applications, or IoT. Oh, I see. So, how about the rest of this stuff? Are they also microcontrollers? Nope. These are electronic components used for different purposes. These things here are called sensors. Well, sensors are capable of detecting or capturing data from the surrounding environment. Like, for example, light, heat, sound, motion, moisture, pressure, or any other environmental phenomena. Basically, anything that surrounds us. And then, converting that data into electrical signals so that your microcontroller can understand and process. Oh, I see. So, are they similar to the sensors included in my smartphone? In a way, yes. However, some of the sensors here in this kit capture different kinds of environmental data. Here, this is what's called a PIR sensor or passive infrared sensor. This is used for motion detection. You commonly see this in solar street lamps or automatic rooms like when a motion is detected, the lights are turned on. In a way, it helps save electricity by automatically turning off the lights when no one is around using them. Oh, that's great! This is called humidity and temperature sensor module. We're most likely going to use this to measure the outside humidity and temperature of our smart home. Now this one is the raindrop sensor module. One possible use case of this is that it can be used for automatic closing of the window of our smart home when it rains. This one here is the photoresistor sensor module, often used as a light sensor. Photoresistors can detect the presence and absence of light. 
So we can use this to detect day and night. We also have an RFID sensor. This is the same technology used in your school ID when you enter and exit the campus. In our smart home, we're probably going to use this tag, which contains an RFID chip for a keyless entry. Then this is a voice recognition module. It has a microphone in it, somewhat similar to Siri and Alexa, where we can use this to control different things in our smart home using voice commands. Really? That's so cool. How about these things? Well, these things here are display modules used to communicate something to the user of this smart home. We have an LCD module that can be used to display text or some sort of information on the screen. Probably the sensor readings will be displayed here, like the temperature and humidity, also the status of our smart home. Then this is a laser module. We also have here an LED module and an RGB light strip. This is similar to the RGB lights in your room. And finally, these things here are servo motors and some gearing mechanisms for the opening and closing of window and door. Wow, it looks like a mini engineering tech lab. I hope we can build this today. Can we start building already? All right then, let's get our hands dirty.
So, after a few hours of assembly and troubleshooting, we were able to make it work. And now I'm going to demonstrate its features first, so you can see for yourself if this kit is good for you. So basically, it has three modes of operation. The default mode is the automatic mode, the second one is voice control mode, and the third mode is the mobile app control mode. The auto mode is simple to operate. You can use this RFID tag to tap on this RF reader and the door opens. Then it automatically closes after a few seconds. In the LCD, you can see the status of the smart home and the sensor readings like the outside humidity and temperature. Now, once this photoresistor sensor receives a darker environment, this LED turns on, assuming nighttime. This range of sensor is supposed to detect water droplets and then it automatically closes the window. There you go! This button, you just have to press it and the laser together with the RGB lights inside the affinity mirror turns on. We can push it again to turn it off. And now, let's test the second mode, which is the voice control mode. This smart home has an automatic speech recognition system. This mode will activate by saying, Hi Lumi! Hi, I am here. Open the door. Okay. Close the door. Okay. Open the light. Okay. Close the light. Okay. Open the colored light. Okay. Close the colored light. Okay. Open the laser. Close the laser. Okay. Open the window. Okay. Close the window. Okay. Isn't that cool? They even have an app for Apple and Android devices. And this is the third mode of control. When you power on the smart home, there is an initial IP address displayed on the LCD. You can use the Acebot app to enter this IP and then press connect. From the app, you should be able to monitor all the sensor data and control the lights, window, and door. Let's try doing that. Now, I have one major comment about the app. It seems outdated. The one shown in their documentation looks good. However, this version of the app that I recently downloaded from Google Play Store has several functions that are missing. There are no control buttons for the window, the laser, and the RGB colored lights. The range up and the photo sensor status monitors are also missing. Perhaps these features are still a work in progress. Anyway, we'll check later if the new version of the app becomes available. So Shob, regarding your honest opinion, what do you think overall? Would you recommend this Acebot Smart Home Learning Kit? Well, building is, this kit is quite tedious but fun and educational at the same time. Building this smart home really tested my patience. It is actually good but has some flaws in the part of the documentation, as we did struggle a bit with some parts as we assembled it. However, the thing is, I really learned a lot while building and playing with this kit. I am now aware of some technical stuff that I didn't even know before. I learned how to troubleshoot. I can easily recall a lot of things that I've learned probably because this is hands-on. Or probably because I can interact with the actual device and really observe how it behaves. For me, learning is so much fun when you can see it, it work right in front of you. So while it may not be perfect, this is perfect for anyone who's curious about technology and wants to get hands-on with coding and electronics. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely more engaging and interactive than traditional learning methods. Plus, it's designed for ages 8 plus, so it's a great way for kids to get excited about STEM education at an early stage. This kind of learning kit encourages creativity and problem solving. You may have encountered some hiccups in the assembly instruction, but it's not just about following instructions. It's about understanding the technology and using it to make your own ideas come to life. Again, thank you so much for joining us in today's episode of Education is Life. If you found this review enlightening, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more Knowledge Pack sessions, and ring the bell to stay updated. So, keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember, education is life. Learning, learning is, is fun. fun.